Hello, this is your virtual life coach, Michael Lewis. Why is everyone so touchy? Why is everyone so easily aggravated and irked? Why? Well, it has to do with a couple of things, truth and stupidity. I will explain. We are all of us on a search for truth in each in our own different way. Yes. What is the right answer? How do we find it? Some of us make fools of ourselves looking for it, and it doesn't matter whether we're at the top or the bottom of life. If we don't know how to find the right answers and we go by wrong answers, we're sunk. Simple as that. If we don't know how to observe and conclude, that's the end of that. That's the end of that game. Truth is the thing that works. Truth is what we've arrived at with the correct information. Truth is what opens the doors. Truth is what makes us smart. And there's more to truth than just facts. Facts can be used for destructive purposes. You meet a person at a party who's rather stout, and you say, wow, you're fat. Now, that may be true enough, but for all you know, they've just lost 300 pounds already on a reducing diet, or it's a glandular condition that they can't help and they're actually been given two weeks to live. In any case, you've just uttered a destructive fact and it hurts people. People excuse this by saying, well, I'm just being honest. Well, I'm telling you this for your own good, yeah. Facts that are used to harm people with no good intention behind it are just as destructive as lies. You've known people like this. They're not nice people, even if they're smiling at you. If you know something and you know it's true, and if you know that imparting the truth in a warm and sincere manner will do some good in the world, then yes, you're a truthful person. Otherwise, if you're lying or you're using facts to make someone feel bad, you're not just untruthful, but you're stupid and you're making people around you stupid and the stupidity spreads. And here's where we enter on how you use these facts, how you use these truths and how you think with them and how you communicate with others on them and how you get into bitter screaming matches with people on politics and how you wind up with a bad taste in your mouth for weeks and weeks on end after one of these arguments and how after you read something on social media that totally makes your blood boil, makes your blood boil so much that you fire back something guaranteed to make the other guy's blood boil and then other people join in and their blood's all boiling and you have all this boiling blood all over the world. I am talking about logic, which is a catch-all phrase for the different ways people think, reason, look at things and convince themselves what is or is not true. There are, as you know, different kinds of logic, but there's only one that really works. The others, not really. First kind of logic is called one valued logic. If you look it up on Google, you'll find it's defined as every phenomenon is reduced to one single value. This is the way that a rabbit thinks or, or a hamster or a primitive man. Uh, that man hit me, so all men are bad. Oh my gosh, there's a man. Run, run, run for your life, run. Or he hit me with that stick, so all sticks are bad. There's a stick on the ground. Run, run for your life. Or that lady was nice to me, so all ladies are nice. Hi, nice lady. You know, you found yourself using this in your weaker moments. Like when you needed to blame something on a person or a thing or a group or heaven or whatever. It's all their fault. There's no other answer. It's just this, and that's the way it is. People use this one valued way of thinking instead of looking at or using facts. It's a dangerous way of thinking, but it's not the most dangerous way of thinking. The most dangerous is two-valued logic. Again, check it out on Google, and you'll find that the definition is possessing only the values of truth or false. True or false. This is the slippery slope. Things are either good or bad, right or wrong, up or down, bad or good, no compromise, no in-between, no shades, no compromise. Your most bitter arguments have concerned two-valued logic. Social media adores two-valued logic. American politics is based on two-valued logic. You've got these two antagonists, one against the other. One is totally good, 
wonderful, awesome. And all the people who follow that person are also good and pure and wonderful and all that. And the other person is vile and evil and nasty and guilty as all get out. And anyone who follows or votes for that person is also the scum of the earth. And that's the way they feel about each other. See, lots of the drama on TV, lots of the drama in movies is built on this two valued, good, evil, bad, good, up, down, black, white sort of logic. The villain versus the superhero. No in between. Prejudice, bigotry, racism, all built on two valued logic. Those people are bad. Those people over there are bad. We are good. Everything that's bad in the world is because of those people over there. And we are the only ones who know whatever. So it's very convenient because you don't have to think. You just label. And you add that much more evil into the world. Now, if you're smart, you won't let yourself be tempted to use two-valued logic because every argument you'll have, you'll be arguing with a fool, you think. And the person arguing with you will also be arguing with a fool, they think. And since it's impossible to win an argument with a fool, and since now you're both fools, you both lose. Terrific. You really can't win with that kind of logic, and you really can't get anything done with it. How about this? Question for you. A guy kisses a girl. Is that right or wrong? I don't know. It depends. No! Two-valued logic says it's either good or evil, right or wrong, no in between. Now, three-valued logic is somewhat better. The internet defines it for us as true, false, or undecided. In other words, yes, no, or maybe. At least you got a little bit of wiggle room there, you know. Maybe that's a good refrigerator. Maybe it's not a good refrigerator. I actually don't know. I can't decide. Let me let me try it out for a few days and I'll let you know. Okay. All right. We can we can deal with that. We can do business with that. Oh, the guy kissed the girl. I guess that's okay if they love each other, but I'm not sure. I don't know all the circumstances. Tell me a little bit more about it. See, it's actually very hard to think rationally at all unless you use three-valued logic. But that's not the best kind. The best kind is called infinite-valued or many-valued logic, which is defined on the internet as a range of continuous grades of truth or untruth, right or wrong. It's a spectrum. It's a panorama. It's a gradualness proceeding toward one extreme on the one hand and another extreme on the other hand. Without this kind of logic, you could never have a thermometer. Things would either be hot or cold. You wouldn't know how hot or how cold. You know, is it tepid? Is it lukewarm? Is it cool? You, you wouldn't know. Uh, speedometer. You can't have a speedometer unless you've got this many-valued, infinite-valued logic. Otherwise, you're either going fast or you're going slow. Well, how fast? I don't know. How slow? I don't know. Five miles an hour, 10 miles an hour? I don't know. So the cool thing about infinite value logic is it forces us to treat everything and everyone on a case-by-case -case basis. It forces us to get actual information so we can decide rationally and not be stupid. Most of all, it forces us to treat each other as intelligent and unique and marvelous individuals instead of lumping us all into some kind of artificial categories that upset everyone. So here we have the very opposite of good, logical, infinite range type of thinking, and that is called social media and the internet and all those lovely people who profit off of your anger and dismay and people bopping each other over the head and arguing and stuff. They are less concerned with facts and logic and they are more concerned with your emotions. Now, here's an example. I don't think I'm stepping on anyone's toes here by using this meme as an example. I saw this meme on, on Facebook not too long ago and it's a photograph of a woman. She is not a Caucasian woman. I won't say what, what race or whatever, but let's just say just not Caucasian. And 
there's and she's smiling you know she looks pleasant enough but underneath the smiling woman is this caption that says i'm a and fill in the blank with uh, a minority ethnic religion so i'm a blank and we are taking over your country with our weird customs and morals so you look at that and you go huh they think they're taking us over with their weird customs and morals, and she's smiling about it. How the heck do you know what she's saying? She could be saying, do you want me to smile? She could be saying, hurry up and snap this picture, I'm hungry. She could be saying, oh, my hair is such a mess. She could be saying anything. But this moronic meme went everywhere and inflamed people who agreed with it and inflamed people who disagreed with it. So you see something, a meme or a video or an article that makes your blood boil one way or the other, take three seconds, one, two, three, and realize your emotions are being manipulated. If there are no cold, hard, verifiable facts, just go, wow, that was emotional, and move on. Now, it might interest you to know where all this social media hogwash and manipulation started. It started in the 1950s at Bellevue Mental Hospital. A man named Ed Greenfield was committed to that mental institution by his wife because he was behaving irrationally. And while he was there under the care of psychiatrists, he had an idea. What if we had computers, and they had computers in the 50s, what if we have computers gather data about people in order to manipulate their choices for anything from shopping to elections? How about that? He hired a team of elite behavioral psychologists, some of them possibly from that very institution from Bellevue, to help him program the computers. And he started a corporation called Symbolmatics, Symbolmatics Corporation. He was basically taking facts about people, their locations, their ages, their choices, their likes, their dislikes, as far as groceries and political candidates go. And he was using those facts to manipulate their behavior. Now, his friend, who was a distinguished uh, essayist and uh, executive in media named Newton Minow, had a problem with that idea. Mr. Minow was afraid that it would set people against each other and that ultimately it could divide the country into warring camps because people would only be seeing and looking for stuff that they agreed with and anything else would be the enemy. And of course he was right and that's what happened and that's where we're at now. So just as a side note, Ed Greenfield and his, his team uh, poo-pooed Newton Minow's fears and so forth. And, and they actually used this system in the election of 1960. It was the first time that uh, data collection and emotional manipulation of on such a scale was used. And it was used for, the, for JFK's campaign. And when the papers heard about this, they called it JFK's robot election. And uh, back then, people were horrified they were horrified that this was going on. They were horrified that people were using technology to manipulate their emotions. And they were afraid that that technology was taking over their lives. And they hated it. And they wanted to be rid of it. But now we love it. We welcome it into our homes. There used to be a um, job description over at Google, which was called Ethicist. Uh, the, and it was, a, it was an actual post there, it's called Ethicist, and was held by a man named Tristan Harris. Um, he's no longer there and they no longer have that position of Ethicist, the person who's in charge of making sure that everything that they do is ethical. Well, he's sounding the alarm about this. He says, two billion people will wake up tomorrow and have thoughts and feelings that they are told to have. Now, many of these Facebook and Google executives have taken courses in persuasive psychology at Stanford University and at other places that should know better about this. These people set up the videos that you watch and make your blood boil and they go viral because you go, oh my gosh, this is ghastly. And you, you know, you 
you click it and you send it to 9 million of your friends and they send it to 9 million of their friends. This has a net effect of setting people against each other because one side has absolutely no idea why the other side feels that way. They must be the enemy. So social networks, which first began as being good and healthful, nice way of getting together, became something of a monster based on two valued logic, forcing us into warring camps and taking away our power of choice by not allowing us to think right, not having the full data to arm ourselves with to make good decisions. So that's why it's sometimes hard to talk to people without turning it into an explosion. This is why people are so touchy and so testy and why you get frustrated with them and they get frustrated with you. Even if you're using infinite valued logic or even three valued logic, but the person you're talking to is using two valued logic, they don't hear a word that you're saying. All they know is that you're wrong, even though you have DNA evidence that you're right. And then you get all mad at them and then you start yelling and screaming. It's all ugly and there's blood everywhere. So just do whatever I do whenever someone wants to bring two valued logic, usually on the subject of politics, into my house. I say, I'm sorry, but my cat and I forbid any political discussions in the house. If you would like to discuss politics, please go out into the street and say what you have to say. And when you're done, Come on back in and we'll have brownies. So here's an exercise that you can do just to bring up your awareness on this stuff, maybe give you a little bit of a leg up on this stuff. Each day this week, just take a bit of time to be aware of two-valued logic in your vicinity. If someone says something to you, or if you see an argument online, or if you think of something that's totally day versus night, up versus down, right versus wrong, with absolutely no shades in between, just realize it's two valued logic. It's not gonna take you anywhere good. It's not gonna take you to a good place. Notice your reaction or the other person's reaction to it. Is there emotion there? Is there any hope of resolution of any kind? Probably not. So take at least three seconds, one, two, three, before you respond to it, if at all. And you'll have a choice. And here is your choice. You can either look at the person, look at what he says, and either accept it or reject it while maintaining your high regard for that person. Or you can look at that person and what he or she says through the filter of your own rightness and emotion and decide on the basis of your emotions and your fixed ideas and your absolute certainty in your own rightness that this person is either your friend or your enemy with no in-between. Doing it the first way will win you friends, give you peace, get you a lot of out of a lot of arguments. The second way will get you a very interesting and emotional and exciting life where you eventually get very bitter and have high blood pressure and have to watch your diet and take lots and lots of meds. So the choice is yours. Hopefully, this makes things make a bit more sense to you. And more importantly, I hope this makes you bring a bit more sense to things. And that's all I have to say for now. So until next time, love each other, take your vitamins, observe posted speed limits, play nice, and never lose sight of who you are. Never, never, never lose sight of who you are. So long for now.